squaring up a block is one thing, but what happens when you've got a rather wobbly block like Sheila's just here? Now, Sheila is one of my students and she has very kindly lent me this Drunkard's Path block from her sampler quilt so that I could show you how to straighten up a very wobbly block. So let's get to it. Who am I? I am Kim. This is Quilt with Kim. You are very welcome. Come on, let's go straighten up Sheila's block. Here we are with Sheila's block then, and we can see how these edges are a bit wibbly wobbly, which can happen quite honestly with the drunkard's path because we've got so many curves. But even if you're not doing a curvy block and you've got these wibbly wobbly edges, here's what to do. Now I've got one shot of doing this because there's only one of these blocks that I've got underneath the camera for you. So I am going to take it through step by step and talk you through how I would approach this. So we can see first of all that we've got a definite leaning over in this bottom left hand corner and over on the right it leans over to the right but we can't really pull it into square, we have to square this up. So the first thing that you're going to do is measure across the middles and that's the rule with all blocks, whatever you're doing, however wibbly wobbly or not they are, to get your sizes you want to be measuring across the middle and that's because the edges are going to be out of kilter quite a lot of the time. Now when we're squaring up wobbly blocks, I'd really recommend getting yourself a square ruler because they are really going to help you in this situation. You can square up a block with your standard quilting ruler. It's just going to be a bit more challenging, but it can be done. But I'm going to go ahead with a square ruler to show you how to do that. Um, and then if I find another wibbly wobbly block on my travels, then I will do the same, but with my quilting ruler. So. Here is a square ruler. This is my big 16 and a half inch one. This is a really good size to have because um, it will square up blocks for quarter to go blocks. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, is measure across the middle here. Now, as you can probably see, we've got 11, it's 11 and a half, it's 11 and three quarter inches if I went from edge to edge. But let's take 11 and a half inches as a, as a point because what I can see, or as a measurement, because what I can see is that that top left hand corner veers in. Okay, so 11 and a half that side. Now remember that because I'm going to ask you in a minute. So I'm going to turn this around, whoops, as it's all got stuck somewhere or another. And then we're going to measure the other way. And that is okay so we've got just over an 11 and a half here so it's 11 and 5 8 in this direction but already I can see underneath my ruler that this corner here is bowing out we've got a little bit of movement here but nothing very much but we can see here that this is going in now, if I take 11 and a half inches as that's going to be my square, let's put my ruler on top and this is where a square ruler will come into its own because what I am trying to find is um, 11 and a half inches square all the way around. But I have to um, keep in mind that I want to have some straight lines going down the centre seams. So I want one of the vertical lines coming down at the centre seam and I need a horizontal line going across the centre seam on the horizontal axis. So if I look at what is half of 11 and a half because if that's what we've decided that our block size is going to be having measured it and that's the closest measurement to both axes, both sides, then if I divide 11 and a half by two, I'm going to get five and three quarters. So what I'm going to aim for is the five and three quarter line down my centre seam here. And that should be enough to get me started. So I'm going to take a moment to line that vertical line up, that five and three quarter line on that centre seam. So all that centre 
vertical line is is half whatever your block size is so let's just say this is 12 inches then you would put the six in the middle if it was 10 and a half inches then you'd put um whatever half of 10 and a half and i can't do the maths off the top of my head was that four and three quarters <laughs> That's not four, four and three quarters. Somebody needs to work that out better than me. You get the idea. It's half your finished block. I, I should have a little sticky up right in front of me to tell me what all the halves were, but I haven't. I'm just talking to you as I'm doing this. <laughs> so, look, I'm not perfect. I'm not superwoman. I'm not a math genius, but I can teach you quilting. <laughs> so, we've got our straight vertical line down the middle which is five and three quarters and then when i'm looking either side i can see how out we are so this side's not too bad this side i can see is all a bit over the place and actually what i can see from my five and three quarters is that already i'm struggling because at the top of the screen here we've got our top little edge here is 11 and 3 eighths whereas down the bottom it's 11 and 5 eighths so that's about a quarter of an inch difference between the top and the bottom so i really need to work on trying to straighten that up okay so let's have a little move around so if i went for 11 and a quarter where would that get me okay i don't know that it's going to get me very far because if i decide i'm going to reduce the size of my block to 11 and a quarter i'm really going to lose quite a lot of this edge of the drunkard's path on this curve and that, that's not something i want to do because i want it looking even all the way around so i need to get it as close as i can to 11 and a half and this is where we need a bit of jiggery pokery with our square ruler this is why this comes into its own to really help you on this block so what i'm going to do is adjust my square ruler very slightly just over to the right because I've got a little bit of a wriggle room here. I'm still keeping it on this vertical uh, axis coming down. And I'm looking at how close to the 11 and a half that I can get near at the top of the ruler where th this bit of the block is, is coming in. And I'm sorry this is going into detail, but I really want to help you to think like a a quilt teacher would think in squaring up a block when somebody's well practiced and they've been doing it for a long time what's going through their thought process whilst they're doing that because it's not a case of just plonking the ruler on and and squaring it up there's a bit of a thought process going on because what we're trying to do all the time is getting a vertical line here getting a horizontal line across the seam as much as we can here and i need to look at all of these aspects to see what I can do to square this block up. Now, with all of those adjustments, so I've nudged my ruler very slightly, I've got this vertical line going down the center seam, which is just a shade, just a whisker over to the left of the five and three quarters. So it's a whisker nearer the six inches. It's not over at the six inches it's very much on the five and three quarter but it's just a shade this side and just doing that making sure that i've still got fabric just a little bit poking out on the edge here and you can see how this gets wider to get down to the bottom i've got my horizontal line and now i can see that i've got the top of my fabric on the left here which is my problem area it's just slightly under uh, the 11 and a half, but it is, I don't know if you can see so close up, maybe if you expand your screen, you can see it, but it is just over the 11 and three eighths line in my particular instance. So that means it's nudging towards, it's with an eighth of an inch of my 11 and a half. 
and that should be enough that I could lose that in the seam allowance but I'm going to have to remember that when I put my framing strips on. So I'm not so worried about the top and the bottom at the moment because we haven't straightened those up yet. So let's do one final little adjustment. Let's get those vertical and horizontal lines on the center, center seams. And if I am happy, the other little adjustment you could do as well is that if this top bit where it's in, so I'm exaggerating, but where it's going in, if it's just a shade under the edge of the ruler, then you can live with that when you put the framing strips on. But I need enough to sit within my seam allowance of the framing strips. So it's, it's a little bit of adjustment. Take your time doing it. But if it's not perfectly on the 11 and a half, we can live with that. So I am happy with that. I've got my straight center seams. I've got vertical and horizontal lines on the center seams. I'm near enough to my 11 and a half up the top. I'm not gonna lose very much over here and I can cut off this bit. So I'm going to cut off this. By the way, Sheila is very brave letting me do this. <laughs> she just left me to it. Let's get that bit off there. How to ruin your nails. Let's get rid of those. So that's that side straight. Now I need to straighten out this side. So I'm going to turn this around. That's just fluff on the edge of the fabric. Let's turn this around. So you can see this now left hand edge is now very straight and you can see how wobbly the rest of this is. So I'm now going to do the same here but it's a bit easier because I know I want 11 and a half inches so I'm immediately going to put that 11 and a half inch line down that left hand cut edge and I'm going to get a horizontal line going through my centre seam and I'm going to get a vertical line going down my um, vertical centre seam and when you start looking at that and doing some little micro adjustments we can see here that our centre seam is not quite over the um, or it's quite over the five and three quarter line just a little gnat's whisker let's see if i can move this out i should have said by the way when you start doing this you need to give your block a very good press which i have done by the way and as you can tell i'm doing this live i only have one of these so this this has to go right particularly as it's not my block i can't through the magic of camera work do this all over again. Oops, let's get that on the right measurement, shall we? Because that was looking all very wrong there. Okay, let's get that back to 11 and a half. That's looking a bit better now. I've just stroked it out. So do watch that all the time. Make sure your fabric hasn't folded back in itself, which this actually had. So I've got my cut edge, cut straight edge on the left at 11 and a half. I've got my centre seams in place. I'm quite happy with those let's give that a little pull here if I can get it okay and this is still folding at the bottom here so it really pays you to take some time to get yourself all lined up and if it's going to take you two or three goes then I would take the two or three goes and you'll thank yourself for it at the end so we're straight we're straight we're pretty much on that five and three quarters this bit's now poking out properly which means I've pulled the fabric out so it's all nice and straight I am happy and that's going to come off. So let's stroke that off and get rid of that, those twizzles there. So that's two sides done. So those two are nice and straight and you can see the difference on those already. So let's tackle those sides. So we're going to do the same thing. 
Let's turn that round. Let's get it all straight. And we can see we've got a bloop going on <laughs> from bottom left to top right. But now we've got top and bottom edges are straight for us. So we do the same thing again. We know we need 11 and a half inches. So let's get that five and three quarter line down our center seam and see where that gets us. But now I can utilize my top and bottom edges. So I've got a top edge on a straight line up the top there. And I've got my bottom edge lining up with a horizontal line down at the bottom. It doesn't actually matter which horizontal line. It's just a horizontal line because then it's all on the straight. And if you look down the middle centre seam, this one here, you'll be able to see if that's straight as well. So again, what I'm trying to get is as many straight sides as I can. So straight here, straight here, straight at the top and on my five and three quarter line coming down here because then I'll know that I'm going to get my 11 and a half inch square. You need to use as many of the, the straight lines as you've got to, to get your square, to get the right angles off, to get your square. So I've got all of those in place and let me have a look to see what I've got and talk you through it. So I'm happy that those are in place. The, the centre line goes up five and three quarters. So let's have a look on the right. We've got the right edge poking out onto the right here. We can see all this, but it comes in a little bit at the bottom. And then over here, we've got all sorts of shenanigans going on. So we've got the edge of the yellow of the uh, this curved block here is sitting very nicely on the 11 and a half. But as I come down, it really veers out to five, uh, sorry, 11 and three quarters. So we need to straighten that up. However, I am happy that that's in the right position that I can get rid of those wobbly edges. But if you're not sure, like I just did on the first set of sides, take a few moments to line all these vertical horizontal lines up to, to get your ruler into position. So you're, just to recap, your straightest lines are your top and your bottom. Um, your, your center seams, your center seams, aren't necessarily going to be the straightest edges, but they'll be straight enough for you to, to give you a guide. Why aren't they gonna be straight? It's because sewing can go a bit dodge. <laughs> so I look at where it goes. This is actually pretty straight. So good on you, Sheila. This is absolutely on the button down there and it's pretty straight going across the middle. So use all the definite straight lines you've got to line up before we trim off. So I am happy that's in the right place. I am going to cut off this right hand edge here. Okay. And then, looking good, I'm gonna turn it round. So this is now my wobbly edge over on the right here. And now this should be easy because I'm going to put my 11 and a half down this left hand cut edge. Okay, so that's beautifully in position. I'm getting a horizontal line across my center seam. I'm going to make sure that I've got a horizontal line going across that top edge there. And I'm going to make sure I've got a horizontal line going across the bottom edge here. And if any of those are out, I'm going to adjust my ruler slightly to get that into position. And when I am happy, which I pretty much am, because we, if you remember from our first set of sides, there was one little bit which was just under, so that's okay, I can live with that there. When we make sure that we've got straight edge, straight edge, straight edge, it's all lining up with the square on our ruler. I've got a straight line down the middle, which I have, and I've got a straight line across the middle seam there. I am happy with that, so let's get rid of this side here and then if you look we have got a beautifully square drunken bath. he is drunk no more in this particular <laughs> example and that is how you straighten up a wonky block
If you have got any problems that you're coming up against, please pop me a comment below because I'll record a video for you. In the meantime, I hope that has helped. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you next time. Bye for now.